It's another week here with Rick Ballou. It's time for our vlog. It's live from Ballou Sports Bar, and it's brought to you by my good buddy Russ Voorhis. If you're looking for insurance anywhere throughout the state, including right here in Jacksonville, give Russ a call. 276 95 35. He's a good man. He will take care of all of your insurance needs. He is with State Farm Agency. All right, another squeaker, another ugly game for the Knowles against the Gates. They got it done. That's all that matters. Your rival. They came in, coach fired, nothing to lose, played hard. Florida State again off to an awful start. I think you get a good a lot of credit to those defensive backs uh, for Florida. Those interceptions they made were just incredible. I mean, they really were. Jameis didn't have a good game early on. Arguably his worst game uh, is a summer in, in two years. Uh, but they found a way. They overcame it. They played better defensively in the second half. They settled down a little bit, went to Dalvin Cook and uh, we're able to get it done against the University of Florida. All right, here comes Georgia Tech. This is a difficult ball game. For the record, I have not picked Florida State to lose a game going back to 2011 when they faced Oklahoma. I figured the Sooners would catch them that day, and they did. Uh, of course, the win streak is 28 games, but even some of those upsets, Virginia, Florida, NC State. Now, I picked Florida State to win each and every game. This one gets really interesting against Georgia Tech. For starters, FSU is a far more talented team. They have better athletes. They have better NFL prospects. What Georgia Tech is able to do is dumb down the game and take away the great athletic plays by Florida State, particularly on the defense. It becomes a mind game. And this is an issue for FSU, particularly now where it looks like Terrence Smith uh, won't start and may not play because of the knee, enter Matthew Thomas. Matthew Thomas, much maligned in his career. And look at his body. He looks like Marvin Jones. He looks like Ernie Smith. He is a huge linebacker. But will he have it up here on Saturday night? You hear about all those expressions like run fits, uh, reading your keys, gap integrity, staying at home. Boy, does that ever apply against the Georgia Tech team. This is a Georgia Tech team that runs the ball 78% of the time. This is a Georgia Tech team that runs the ball to the average of more than 333 yards a game. They completely gashed the Georgia Bulldogs one week ago. And this is a huge week for FSU defensively to try to settle things down. It's been on the defense all year. Everyone's been upset about the third down defense. I told you a week ago it's about first down. Stay ahead of the chains. You can't allow Tech to be second and two or second and three. And they're going to pick up another first down. They're going to milk the clock. They're going to orchestrate, author, and engineer the 12, 13, 14 play drive, eclipsing six to seven minutes off the clock. What does that do? Less at bats for Jameis. Again, they average more than 12 a game. They only got eight against BC. Really the only good running team that Florida State has faced this year. Well, look at the Eagles did against Florida State. They ran it right at them. Different style of running. That was power between the guards, right at them, just out-muscled FSU with that enormous BC offensive line. This is a little bit more athletic with what they do at Georgia Tech. We're really good when they're able to get off the edge. Okay, They have success between the guards and the tackles, but with this triple option offense, with three guys who carry the ball, including their quarterback, they become especially dangerous when they're able to run off the edge. <clears throat> big game for the ends here. Big game for Walker. Big game for Edwards. Again, you and I both know, not a lot of depth. That's a concern for me. The defensive front four, will they stay in that 4-2-5? Boy, if there was ever a team, but you absolutely have to go 5-2 or 4-3. It's got to be Georgia Tech. They just don't have enough bodies right now defensively. That's a concern for me. On the flip side, Georgia Tech, 27 is the key number. What is it, he asked? I got it for you. 27 turnovers Florida State has committed. 27 takeaways Georgia Tech has been a part of. This is not a great Georgia Tech defense. However, it's a ball hawking defense. It's a defense that forces a lot of turnovers. If Jameis Winston struggles in the first half like he has all year, that's not good. Tech could get up in this game. And it could finally be a situation where Florida State's been trailing all year. They've always been able to come from behind. It's going to be especially tough here against Georgia Tech. I don't like Carlos Williams being out. Cook is a better back. But Williams has experience. He's made some big plays in big games. He 
He's better at picking up the blitz. He's better at chipping when you need some help against defensive ends or blitzing linebackers coming from the rambling wreck. He's also got some soft hands out of the backfield. Dalvin Cook has been outstanding. It seems like there's been times where he's gotten hit hard and had to go to the sideline. You really wonder, is he 100%? I also don't have a lot of uh, faith right now in Pender. He hasn't gotten a lot of carries. just seems like he gets tripped up or doesn't have the vision that Cook has and, and doesn't hit the hole properly. Maybe it's just because of the lack of experience. But, boy, I tell you what, something as important as an Atlantic Coast Conference championship game, I really hate that to be the one where you expect a guy to finally get it. Uh, to me, that's a little bit of an issue. Florida State needs to put together some drives. This is a time possession game. Georgia Tech is one of the best at controlling the clock in all of college football. Florida State has been awful at that this year. They can't go three and out, three and out, let Tech score first. They've got to put together some offensive continuity, do it with a balanced attack, and hopefully Jameis wakes up. I don't know what was wrong with the young man last week. I don't know if it was the hearing, uh, the code of conduct situation, which wrapped up on Wednesday. I don't know if something else was bothering him. Didn't look himself. Here's what I do know. Two things. Number one, Jameis was really criticized. I expect him to respond. He's that type of football player. Number two, for really the first time all year, people are really picking Georgia Tech. There's been other situations like maybe Miami, maybe Louisville, maybe Notre Dame, where some picked the opponent. But it seems like in this matchup now, a lot of people believe that Georgia Tech will upset Florida State. This is an Elite Eight game for the Knowles. It's simple. You win, you're in. Whether you're four or three or whatever, it doesn't matter. Frankly, I think because of you and the fans, it's a better trip to New Orleans to face Alabama than to go way back out west uh, as we were in January for the Rose Bowl. That's a long trip. You're going to have to get Alabama anyway. You might as well get them in the semis as opposed to getting them in the finals. That's the way I look at, look at it. Worry about that later. Worry about 60 minutes against Georgia Tech. You're 60 minutes from the first ever Final Four in the history of of college football, you're 60 minutes away from an opportunity to win two more ball games and repeat as national champions. Smith is out, Williams is out, not a lot of depth, but I think the better team prevails in a cold night and shower where, we re where reportedly it's been raining all week and it will rain tomorrow on Saturday morning as well. My understanding as if we should ever trust a meteorologist is that it will go away come game time. I guess 20% chance of rain. Rain is not good for FSU. It's not. Rain favors a running team like Georgia Tech. And uh, that's a factor as well. Despite that, I think they keep it rolling. I like 29 now in a row for the Knowles. It's going to be your classic. What was it earlier I said? Just smile and ignore? Well, that's kind of turned into now of three and a half hours of stress with a happy ending. And that's the way it's been for FSU as of late. I think that continues Saturday night. Boy, I'd love to tell you they come out strong and get it done in the first quarter and really play some better football, uh, but that just hasn't been the way they've gotten it done this year. I think they have enough. They're going to have to score in the 30s. So give me something along the lines of a 34-27 type matchup, and I think Florida State will move on to make it to the Final Four. All right, reaction to this vlog. You can do so by Hitting me on Twitter, Blue1010XL, uh, the radio show each and every day, 3 to 7 on 1010XL and 92.5 FM right here in Jacksonville. We do it live from Blue Sports Bar, where this is always a good time. And the report is brought to you by my good friend Russ Morris. If you're looking for insurance needs, give Russ a phone call, 276-9535. Russ is with State Farm Agency. Folks, have a great weekend. Enjoy the game. Saturday night, we'll do it again next week where I expect the Knowles to be in the first ever college football playoff.